hey, yeah, I've got technical issues, but fuck it, go. <laughs> <laughs> Just why Hello, not? everyone, and welcome back to a very special yeah. technical episode of Jarred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so far it's just one of three that have got technical problems yet as you may well technically speaking at least one other has problems yeah technically speaking at least two others have problems anyway you guys uh amber's not here tonight so hey, we've all got problems <laughs> we've all got problems and technical <laughs> I don't. I'm perfect. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Or at least I know how to say itinerary. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, yes, unfortunately, we are missing Amber. We are Amberless tonight. Yes. Just thankfully, it's not her episode. <laughs> she ran away. Um, she ran off to live in the forest. And... Um, we don't know if we'll ever speak to her again or see her again. The last scene with seven dwarves. <laughs> well, first of all, that's Snow White, so jot that down. Amber's brown. Okay, no, I was just going off the fact that you said she ran off to the forest. That's what I was... Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, what's going on? What's up? Not much. There it is. <laughs> I was about to say, didn't expect very ah. much from Dougie, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, not much on my own. Weather, though, however, is fucking gorgeous at the moment. We have literally just gone over the last two days. We've gone from eight degrees to 19. And oh my God, it's fucking gorgeous. I cannot get enough of it right now. Just getting up and it being blowing sunny hot like having my sleeves rolled up going to work and just enjoying the view having the nice walk to work the nice walk home and they're just chilling out in the garden all night it's so bliss and i've got like another full week of it hell yeah i'm so happy well that's cool i'm so happy for you i didn't know this was a small talk podcast now anyway so dougie's presenting this week <laughs> <laughs> I have no response yes, for that. Unfortunately. <laughs> what do you got for us? Yeah, Dougie, what do you got for us? Oh, okay. He's... So, I apologize now. I'm, I'm not good at doing fucking this shit. But Use voices. I'm doing my best. You had my, what? You had my disastrous one last week. You do voices, do impersonations. <laughs> I can't do impersonations. Like, oh, no! kill me <laughs> now i'm gonna kill you very good no like a bedtime story so i'm gonna kill you very good i'm doing samuel leonard boyd Ooh. he he did his murders between september 13th 1982 and april 22nd 1983 and only four of them. <clears throat> okay. So, is Samuel Boyd is an Australian multiple murderer from New South Wales, currently serving five consecutive sentences of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for the murder of four people and the malicious wounding of one. Um... So he immigrated from Scotland with his family age 11. And yeah, then he couldn't find much else information about him. It's always the Scotsman, so, man. It's always the Scotsman. <laughs> um, oh, when was he born? 1955. So, yeah, he was in his late 20s. When he murdered, did his murdering. Okay, so his first murder, he stabbed Rhonda Kalia, a young married woman with two children, 
um, while he was working as a pest controller. Now, <clears throat> I have a question already. Okay. The pest control gig, was that, yep. did he do that to gain access to his victims or as just something that happened? I, I think it was just, um, yeah, that was he, a job he, that he was doing at the time. Okay. And, um, Not condoning this, but that'd be like a good way to I, gain access to somebody's home. Like, yeah, I, like I said, I couldn't find a lot of information about the specifics mm -hmm. of what led up to it or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, he was working as a pest exterminator and living with his mum in Busby, in New South Wales. When he was hired by his first victim, mother of two, Rhonda Kalia, 27. Um, so he slashed her throat and a naked body was found lying in the hallway with a child's dress over her face and her underwear, pantyhose and dress around her. Um, I couldn't really find a huge... Like, there's a lot on Murderpedia, but I'm not good at reading into. I thought you were going to say, I'm not good at reading. I was going to say, I'm not good at reading. No. Like, we not, don't need two of those in I'm, here. I'm, I'm fine with the reading. It's just understanding all the legal jargon and <laughs> deciphering and everything like that. Um, we don't need two of those in here. <laughs> but, yeah. So, then... I'm sure I saw something about questioning. Oh, I'll get into that anyway. So then seven months later, um, he murdered Gregory Wiles. Wills, Wiles, Wiles. Also 27, strangely enough, mm. who, he'd, who they'd both been drinking at a bar in Liverpool, in New South Wales, not... Not my Liverpool, England. yep. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> sort of better emphasise yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Gregory was found on the side of the road with severe injuries, injuries, injuries <laughs> consistent with a hammer blow to his head and his trousers were pulled down around his knees. This guy got the same MO for yeah. everything. Nasty, nasty, nasty. That's then that same day, he then went to the Glenfield Park Special School where his mother had previously been employed and which had dormitories for boys and girls. He terrorised three women at Knife Point who worked there as supervisors. He forced the women to undress, perform sex acts on him and each other, bound their hands and feet and walked up and down from one victim to another, slashing and stabbing each in turn in the neck. Oh. Two women, Patricia Volsic and another who cannot be named for legal reasons, were stabbed to death. A third, Olivia Short, amazingly survived. Wow. Um, uh, he was 29 at the time when he was. they arrested him, found guilty and sentenced to five consecutive lifetime imprisonments for the four murders and the malicious wounding. Uh, yeah, so... At the time, there was a system for releasing prisoners on parole at the discretion of the government. But the legislation changed in 89 so life imprisonment meant life imprisonment mm -hmm. with no prospect of parole prisoners 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 who were I'm getting Ryan 19 here <laughs> who were sentenced to life <laughs> before this legislation under the previous system of release on license were permitted to apply to the supreme court to have a minimum sentence determined, but that was that they only had the one chance, 
and um, he uh, who was it? Crown Prosecutor Hugh Baker. I'm guessing it's Hugh. That's a weird way of spelling it, but <laughs> said Boyd's murder fell into the worst category and showed an extreme degree of callousness and brutality. Um, and he said uh, the court should reject his application to set a specified term for his sentence and he should never be released. Mm. And uh, one official said that he will, if he does apply for parole he and the board grant it, mm. he will revoke it. Good. He is it. Like he's yeah. yeah, yeah. He's in the position to say no. Sorry, yeah, you're not. Good. You're not coming out. Um, but the weird thing I got into with regards to him being in, since he's been in jail, he says he doesn't really mm. remember why he did a lot of it. Right, and he's even said that um, he'd be willing to take um, chemical castration oh. if it's his if it's his sexual desires that are the problem yeah um, Shit. he says he's for more than two decades he said he had been an, a Christian and had non off relationship with a woman he had met while in prison. I've tried to embrace the Christian philosophy in how I should conduct my life in matters of everyday living. Boyd has always claimed that he did not murder Mrs. Clear. That was his first one. Mm -hmm. And that he has no recollection of the other three murders. When he was first jailed, he blamed cannabis and pesticides. But in his submission to the judge, Boyd said he spent much time reflecting on the reason why I did these terrible things. When, to came, when I came to prison for so many years to come, I had a huge problem accepting the responsibility of my actions that led to the death of three people. This was on a handwritten note tended to court. Mm -hmm. While at the time I'm still unable to explain what actually happened on that night morning, I am responsible. Those people suffered by my actions, hands, my doing. The court heard that the Corrective Services, Services Minister, Commissioner, not Minister, Commissioner, had determined that Boyd was a moderate to high risk of sexual reoffending. Two forensic psychiatrists gave evidence that because of Boyd's either real or feigned amnesia about the Glenfield Park school murders, there were gaps in understanding what motivated his actions and it made it difficult to, deter to determine the likelihood of him reoffending without any precision. So, <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was a bit of a... We, that was mainly the reason I picked this one is he doesn't recollect doing the murders... And they were all, they weren't the same type. Yeah. Like each one had its differences. Mm. And so it was just more of a. Um, Is that it? A, a, a urge, just a. Yeah, I was going to say, it's how he says as well that he has no recollection. He, it was just more of a, I guess, kind of an impulse, which. I don't know. To me, it, does that make it worse? Like if it's just an impulse off the backhand sort of thing? Or is premeditated worse? Like, I don't know. I think premeditated, well, premeditated is always worse. You've been planning it oh, yeah, for yeah, true. I guess it is. Yeah, you've been a certain amount of time. Yeah. And to just suddenly... Decide just, to kill someone. Yeah, you start right. Today's the day I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, I guess it is. Yeah, 
that's I mean they're both bad well yeah no they, they are <laughs> impulse though is like premeditated is worse but impulse is a little bit scarier because that means that anyone you never know could, what yeah anyone mm. could do it, it yeah. like it it could literally it happen could literally to anybody. just happen yeah it's a click of a finger and it could <clears throat> it could be all over <clears throat> I think so far, I think we've had, because my one last week, Florence Ransom, she didn't really have much recollection of the doings as well. And didn't, was it Amber's or yours, Jess, that didn't really, had a bit of a foggy memory regarding it as well? Was it Probably not? not. I mean, my guy was very calculating. Like, yeah. he was very Yeah, I no, so. I think that might have been, been Amber's. Been Amber's. So far, it seems to be a common theme with uh, some serial killers that they sort of have a foggy glaze over their actual crimes. And so I guess it's interesting to oh. see because it's kind of like a mental block almost because you because it's so it's heinous. It's the adrenaline. Yeah, it's so sinister almost. And you, don't, you almost can't believe once the adrenaline is settled down, it's like, shit, I didn't do that. And just kind of write it off almost. That's what's fucking scary to me. And um, Howard, we're discussing about the female ones mm. more often than not to our own children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Majority of the female ones that are looked up in Australia, I was just going through. Yeah, were. They were in children. As either their partner mm. or their children. Mm. Yeah. Very rare. Was it? Other than that. Did you Well, it's I mean it's it's also very rare that people just kill random people. Like yeah. there's almost always a motive. Yeah. Like there's just it's not I don't know. Apart it just from this it one. seems it, well, yeah. it seems like it would be much uh much more explainable to kill someone you know rather than just a stranger. Just a random, I mean Yeah, I mean this guy's just going by his Day to day, nine to five is the best control. And he's like, "Ah, oh, well, I'm gonna attack and assault this woman." Mm. Which, I mean, I would never kill anyone I knew. Well, next, it, can be, it can be linked back. That's you don't nice want to, to be able to. You don't want to be able to trace it back. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that's reassuring to hear. Um, <laughs> I might make an exception. Oh no! <laughs> um, <laughs> run. Um, yeah. Um, I I tried to find a bit more information about him, like any history of anything, mm. but I could not. I could, yeah, nothing um, about like my his sources, childhood or anything. Yeah, so his my my sources were the Murderpedia, um, also the Sydney Morning Herald. dot com dot au, and SerialKillerCalendar dot com. Oh, <laughs> one for every day thing? of the year. Um, <laughs> did you? Did you or is it like, like they they have a pinup for every month? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who have we got this month? Um, did you? Because I I know like I mentioned last week on mine, I I didn't struggle like trying to like, nail down a serial killer because the UK has obviously had quite a few like in, both men and women who have sort of about 700 and something but compared to the US numbers obviously it's massively different like what is it with Australia obviously because yes it's a large country but everyone's so spread <laughs> out like your population is huge yeah, but so spread um, out like there there were there is quite a few right um but in the list on Murderpedia mm. um you have filter through all the yeah lower numbers yeah of course there's a lot of single digit yeah murderers yeah um and there's also there's a few rather large ones uh, yeah it's rather um, con- well just to save for time or effort for your future episodes you don't you don't have to get people who have low a low count no it, no it, i know yeah it can I'm just, just be someone trying like, to f- like I, I tried to search low profile, and it, yeah, it just searched those yeah. separate terms and gave me a random list, and but a couple of them that it came up with that was seemed fairly 
recent and known. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to find, like, I half of them I have never heard of anyway myself, but um, that doesn't mean they're not well known. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's there was quite a few, and some going right back to the 1800s yeah. of what they called baby farmers. That sounds evil as fuck. Where do I sign yeah, up? I think it is as it sounds. And I think we'll leave that one as it is on that one. <laughs> that We'll probably leave that for a different season. Yes. <laughs> that sounds like that could follow but over I, into... There was, <laughs> there was more than just one. Oh, God. Like, it was, it was a common thing, almost. Shit. Well, you got the Brits to thank yeah. for us for that in Australia, because um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was. But yeah, like I went through a, a few different ones, and this one sort of piqued my interest. Yeah. How random, yeah, his was. Yeah, it just it doesn't seem very calculated. It is just sort of no. Like I said, I wanted to try and find any information about him, like. Previously. What may have led up to it, but um, but nothing. Yeah, just snap. Um. You know, one time I told Dougie where the Australian accent came from, and he didn't believe me. Where does the Australian accent come from? It's from the British immigrants getting so drunk oh, that their accent yeah. became slurred. Yeah. And he was like, nah, that's not true. And I was like, yes, it is. I will literally Google it right now. It is. Australia, the prison island. <laughs> they had nothing else to do except drink. Yep. And also, I've just been educated a little bit more about Australia. The fact that you've got a Liverpool and you have a Glenfield and a New, mm. and a New South Wales. Like, Glenfield is like 30 minutes away from me. Like, it's not far. <laughs> Um, Liverpool, however, that's like two, three hour drive. I think I don't know. I I don't drive. I'm not good with geography. But no, Glenfield just down the fucking road. Like that's where I went to have my. That's where I went to have my vaccine. Actually, I went Glenfield Hospital. Like <laughs> it's that close. <laughs> what What was his birthday, Dougie? Was it your birthday? <laughs> no, strangely enough, it was not. <laughs> uh, um. Oh, maybe we should all find serial killers that are born on our birthdays. Oh, Amber already found I was one. Say, yeah, I've got yours. Uh, all I get for date of birth was his year, nineteen fifty-five. And what was his name again? Sorry, Samuel Leonard Boyd. Okay. Oh, there's you a whole website that that's like, do you share your birthday with us? <laughs> Just put it in the Discord. <laughs> Just put it in the Discord <laughs> afterwards <laughs> so I'm not fucking it up. <laughs> no, the Nate, when you first said it at the beginning of the episode, it slightly rang a bell. I don't know why, but it did. And I was waiting for you to say that he shot his victims rather than stabbed them. And, and But no, that, that, that's fine. I must have been thinking of somebody else. Um I can't remember who, who, but the name, the name is something very, very similar. That, that was all. Um, I think I'd rather be shot than stabbed. As well, like yeah. Well, it depends on where you get shot. Those to if you're going to die straight away or not. Same with stabbing. True. True, but I, I think it, j- just the thought of any form of impalement, just ah, nah. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And then yeah, them sticking it in, then pulling it back. Yeah, in, and then going again and again. Yeah, like this guy. I mean, he, he stabbed those women multiple times in the neck. Like, uh, how that one survived? Uh, yeah, the third one. I mean, fucking good on her. She's got some strength in her. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, a bit traumatic for the rest of her life, but just a tad. I was about to say, I imagine the, the therapy after that, you're trying to get that image out of your head. Well, you never would. <laughs> Damn. Well, oh, good job, Dougie. That's um Yeah, that was interesting. It was actually. 
Nasty. Nasty, nasty. I, hey, I didn't see this. Oh, you got more. Oh, you got more. There's a little, a little bit of um, when he, the family moved to Australia from Scotland, mm-hmm. um, they came to the notice of police soon afterwards, had a, experienced a troubled childhood which involved profound deprivation including alleged sexual abuse at the hands of his own mother. Oh, so that's... So there's... there's the source. <sighs> yeah. There it is. Completely missed that little little paragraph. Just that tiny little bit, which is very vital information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A big clue as to... Yeah. yeah. Wow. This is why not just anyone should have children. If you can't take care of your fucking kids, or if you're gonna abuse them, or whatever the fuck, don't have like, just don't have just kids. Don't have and then be like, "Oh, my baby!" Whenever they get in trouble for being a serial killer, like you raised it, like yeah, you can't just be lazy with parenting Mm-mm. or bad with parenting. No, like I say it like I'm speaking from experience, but it's just it's obvious. No, with like these serial killers, it's like it's always something with their childhood. Of sorts, yeah. I mean, mine. She was just she had just a history of mental illness, but but yeah, major, common. Yeah. But she she had that history. Yeah, but it was the history so, there. Yeah, yes. it, it, and that stems from your childhood because that is where you're most vulnerable. It's where you pick up things the most. It's where you, excuse me, develop and grow. It's where you, yeah, you pick up your traits. So yeah, if you if if you're if you're a new parent, take care of the little shit, otherwise it will turn into a shit. <laughs> Fuck. Well, well, much appreciated, Dougie. Yes. Um, you guys, we are literally so close to getting a thousand downloads for April alone. It's... Like we're within the hundred forty mark. Till a thousand, it's, and it's, we're only halfway through the month. It's it's insane. Mm. It's it's scary the amount of support you guys are giving us. I'm like, <laughs> the, the the thanks will come later. I was talking though. I, so um, just put the fuck out of this anyway, one. <laughs> we're only halfway through the month. So if you're listening to this episode, we would really really appreciate it if you would also download. It literally takes a split second to download. Like, don't just listen. Download because that's what makes a difference. That this will have been our biggest month yet for downloads, right? Correct, yeah. So, please, please. You don't even have to share it. You don't even have to give us a heart or anything on whatever you're listening to. Just fucking download it. That's all we're saying. You don't even have, you don't even have to ever listen to it again. Just yeah. put it in the old box and shut it. Just <laughs> download, lock, throw away the key. That's all you have to do. Anyway... We do appreciate the downloads. I don't know where the fuck they're coming from, but um, yeah, no, nah. that's much wild. appreciated. So mm. as long as we keep growing and the numbers keep going up, then that's a little bit closer that we are to, you know, gainful employment through this stupid podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time coming. This will be the third fucking year. <laughs> yeah, it's about time you guys finally appreciated us. Yes. Anyway, so <laughs> if you want any of our social media, then just Google it because, you know. We're there. We're the entire, we're at least first page of Google. So We are the entire first page of Google. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else? Uh, no, you're, ne- you're up next week, aren't you, Jess? Yep. Any teasers for us? Nope. Cool. Great. We'll see you all next week. Okay, bye. (laughs) Love yous. Bye.